Welcome everybody to this new episode of My Data Guest. Today's guest is Andrea De Mauro. Andrea De Mauro doesn't really need my introduction. Uh, he has more than 15 years of international, international experience in managing data analytics and data science teams with various organi organizations. Currently, he's the head of business intelligence at Vodafone in Italy. Previously, he served as director of business analytics at Procter and Gamble. His role there was to look after the usage of data analytics into the business and after the development of uh, digital fluency across the global organization. Uh, besides being a data scientist himself and a data science manager, he's also a professor, uh, a professor for marketing analytics and applied machine learning at various universities the International University of Geneva, Switzerland, and the universities of Bari and Florence in Italy. In his research, he investigates the role of big data and the impact of AI and data analytics on companies and people. Uh, he's also the author of popular data science books and of research papers in international journals. So welcome, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you, Rosario. You're, you have been in the space of uh, data science time for uh, of data science for a long time now. You have been a technical professional, a manager, a teacher. So we are all uh, very grateful uh, for your participation today because we want to hear all the different experiences in these different roles. So I have here my first question. Um, how many different professional profiles do you see in the data science space? Are we all still data scientists? <laughs> yes, I I think we are not all data scientists. Indeed, that was um, there was a, a moment in which it it seemed that data scientists would would do everything right. So uh, the, the 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 myth of a data scientist. Uh, um, superhero who would uh, take care uh, end to end uh, of the full uh, of the full landscape of complexities you know around data analysis but the reality of course is far from uh, uh, from these now um, roles uh, there is a, a plethora of roles available in this uh, um, uh, amazing world of data analytics i would say three main role families i normally use this uh, classification data analyst or business analyst who focus on the interface between the data and the business data scientists who um, focus more on the algorithms themselves and on the scaling of the um, analytics capabilities and then data engineers if you wish a family which is more connected to the you know keeping up and running and making the, the, the data platform um, that is uh, underlying, that is powering everything else um, effective and, uh, and fit, uh, fit to use no? for the business needs. So these three role function, right? But at least uh, they let us see uh, that there is more than just, uh, you know, the role of the data scientist, which is, of course, very important, very vital and central, but it's one of the many. So we are say. becoming more specialized. Indeed, indeed. Yes. But then there is also a data science manager, right? Yes, yes, of course. Then within uh, within each of these role families, you have uh, um, uh, different levels. You know, managing a team of uh, data science itself entails uh, uh, skills which uh, might be different from actually the same uh, senior role uh, in the other. You know, in the other buckets, indeed. So yes, I think you know the good the good thing about this simple uh, three um, uh, classes. Um, framework is that at least we see where the key differences are, where the key focus focus is, right? On the business, on the algorithm, on the on the data, and 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 then uh, everything else, uh, uh, of course, comes as a, as a consequence of this focus, of this key focus on these three areas. I see, I see. So I'm talking to the manager now. You are the manager, right? So what is the professional category? which is the hardest to recruit and why? 
look, this it, they're all tough, which is good news, right? For people who want to who are in this space or want to enter this uh, um, you know colorful uh, um, world of data analytics. So it's it's a good news for for them as as employers. We struggle across all the categories. Now, for different reasons, they're all tough. I would say one that I'm, you know, find part the business analyst role and um, or data or data analyst. I mean, it's the same uh, thing. I think finding the people that have what it takes to get the business um, complexities answered with the algorithms required uh, such a um, you know horizontal uh, skill set which is hard to find also you required an hybrid sort of like education in the background or experience overall and possibly it's also a bit more difficult to explain to graduates to you know um, students to to graduates and also to professionals what's what's really what what it takes right what, what is requested what is required for being an efficient uh, and effective uh, business analyst but they are all all these classes are quite um, in demand today so it's definitely a good time to study analytics to enter this world and uh, you know and to uh, and to invest time in developing you know yourself in this area yeah i think it's a very good time <laughs> The little hint. <laughs> yes. um, uh, so talking about entering this space as a data engineer, a data analyst, or a data scientist. So in your experience, um, do these different profiles uh, need a different uh, data education? Mm, I think uh, all of these profiles required, first of all, one thing, which is growth mindset, the willingness to keep uh, learning. And I'm stating this not because it's just a theoretical or cool thing to say, but because it's actually very true. None of these uh, professionals can survive without uh, being open and, uh, and also if being effective at learning every day continuously. So that's the most important bit. Having said that, uh, any engineering, uh, uh, or business backgrounds, uh, business educational backgrounds are, you know, great starting point, especially for business analysts and data scientists. For data engineering itself, uh, more and more is uh, it is required to have uh, um, vertical expertise uh, on some platforms, on one or more big data platforms, right? Uh, the names are always the same. Uh, uh, GCP, of course, Azure, um, and, and AWS. I mean, but just to mention the most uh, popular. But in general, uh, as a data engineer, you want to have a certification of that kind. The good news is that it's full now of plenty of opportunities to, to get certified in these, uh, in these technologies. And uh, yes, that, that's a good investment that possibly goes on top of the standard, uh, let's say, education, the, the traditional education uh, uh, offering you know, that the universities uh, offer. So this is some universities are already offering, um, you know, dual programs in which you get also a certification you know, as part of your of your curriculum. But uh, I think that that's an important you know, thing to have for a data engineer. Yes. And for the other two? For the other two, yes, I think it's um, there is um, a very rich offering of um, sometimes even free, uh, you know, online learning opportunities like mocks type of thing, like you know, Coursera, EDX, and other providers of this kind. They offer certification paths as well for the other for for all of these roles. To be to be fair, I mean, if you Google, uh, you will. You find plenty of these uh, certifications. I normally uh, recommend uh, people who do not have uh, an educational background fully, you know, dedicated to to data science, to make use of these um, certifications. Sometimes they are for they they come for free, but they are super high quality. I I did 
many of them my, myself uh, i keep uh, you know registering uh, you know from time to time to these uh, uh, online uh, mock uh, courses some of them are amazing and they come from the best universities in the world and um, I, you know they're for free so yes i would definitely recommend looking into that as well to take advantage of them okay yes. Um, okay, so now that we are talking about tools, uh, what tool does a data professional need to learn? Python, I would say NIME, of course. Uh, I, so obviously, I love NIME, right? Otherwise, and I hope, uh, Rosario, you are appreciating the color of my sweater, right? I <laughs> picked it on purpose, no, just to be in line. So, fantastic. So, so for, of course, I love NIME. Uh, however, you know, today. <laughs> To the question on which tool you need, um, actually, this is a concept that I also, uh, you know, explain because I think it's very important for a person entering this world to understand. Is like you need to have a toolbox. It's if you if you if you are a, if you are a pl plumber, you will not uh, go and do your job with just one tool, right? You you just can't. So the reality is that you need a toolbox. You need a backpack. Uh, full, uh, full of ma of options, full of options. Now, you do not need to learn all of them. You mentioned Nyman and Python. I would say that um, a good mix. What counts is a, is the mix. Is the mix is, is the mix of products that also complete each other, right? As as part of this toolbox, I I would normally um, recommend having always a you know business intelligent. Uh, intelligence product like focusing on enabling you know scaled dashboards and, um, and you know data visualization capabilities a low code um, analytics this, um, platform and of course Nime is a great um, you know best example for and also a more traditional code base analytics tool because which, by the way, can be, of course, wrapped in, and and mixed and matched uh, together also with the, with the, with Nime and with the low code analytics platform. Once you have these three, you have enough flexibility to cover for a large portion of the um, of the needs uh, needs you have in front of you in any of these of the three uh, role uh, families that we mentioned. And uh, but yes, I think the key the key word is the toolbox is to build your own toolbox. And sometimes you build the toolbox also picking depending on your personal preference. I mean, there is not like one recipe that works for for everything and for everyone. And there are multiple tools available. Of course, we might prefer one or or the others. But you know, you pick the ones you 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 prefer. The important thing is you have diversity in this toolbox. It's a portfolio. It's a portfolio, yes. It's a portfolio. Yes. I see, I see. So what career advice would you give to an aspiring data professional then? First of all, learn the portfolio of tools. Yes. Um, get connected to this and probably prior to this, I would say, do not wait for your first job to get work experience. You don't have to and you shouldn't. Um, you don't want to get to your first interviews unless uh, you have your hands, you know, dirty with data and algorithms. They want, they need to smell, you know, uh, data, data analytics, uh, because otherwise that, that's, that's not a position which you want to find yourself, right? To say, oh, well, I'm passionate about analytics, but I, I, I don't know what it is. Or I've, I've you know, um, I've never built a model by myself, a simple machine learning model by myself. So you you really want to get experience. So if somebody is new in this area or a student or st still studying, I, I always suggest uh, the same, you know, go, go out and look for opportunities to apply analytics. You know, um, you can go to, you know, sort of like uh, uh, in the simple approach is to go to websites like Kaggle, find uh, online competitions for free. You don't need to become rich by winning uh, any of the competition. You just gain experience. It's an important way of 
being of you know of, of becoming rich actually uh, that that offs, offers you opportunities to build your own curriculum of um, uh, of uh, you know models and capabilities that you can actually uh, that you create your build your experience on and that you can actually talk, sp uh, speak about during your interviews and other op options like go to charities go uh, look uh, for charities asking if they need any help with their data uh, maybe you can build a model to uh, identify the next uh, you know donors who they can be um, you can do pro bono you know work for smaller companies for free just to get experience and to get your hands dirty you don't want to get to the interviews with clean hands uh, i'm talking met metaphorically of course you want to you know look neat but it, you know when it comes to data you need to have the hands dirty you need to have done at least something yes absolutely okay so let's talk now to the teacher um, do you use NIME to teach your data science courses? Of course. I mean, rhetorical question. I, 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 used, I used it for a long time uh, from both at the university and at work, you know, with uh, PNG, with Vodafone. Yes, I keep uh, using it. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing tool uh, for a uh, teaching data science, but because um, you decouple, first of all, multiple reasons. First one, you decouple the complexity of learning how to code with the complexity of learning what it means to do analytics. So, because sometimes these two things get uh, um, merged and people also get discouraged, believing that the only way to do analytics is to be a proficient uh, programmer. And by the way, this is, this is something that looks uh, obvious, but it's, it's actually not. Many people, even in our uh, data, uh, data professionals uh, world and environment, uh, still think that the only way you can do data science is, like, is, to, is to code. And uh, anyway, we, we can go back to that part, but I, I don't expect this to be uh, always uh, always true but uh, come coming back to why uh, teaching why learning analytics through um, uh, a tool like nime right which is visual well you see what's going on it's as simple as that you see what is going on you you understand you know where how the data is flowing uh, you understand where um, you know what's happening if something goes wrong you can easily pick, well, easily. Of course, you need to get some guidance on that, but it's easy to see where the problem is. And so um, this helps uh, the education, this supports the educational experience um, and makes it uh, also also cool, um, actually, for, uh, you know, so for, do, for students, yes. Do they appreciate that? They they do they do they you know I I'm getting uh, many uh, diverse reactions from uh, my mm -hmm. students you know the last uh, last year uh, at uh, IUG the University in Geneva you know uh, one of the students said but, well but now I'm, I mean normally they say I wished I knew uh, earlier but that's a separate mm -hmm. uh, conversation but they one one of them said um, it's like uh, playing with Legos no. And, and actually, it's uh, there is an element of uh, uh, play, you know, joyful uh, um, play that of comes fun. with actually yes, of fun, right? That comes with actually composing your own workflow by putting the notes as Lego bricks, and uh, yes, so they they really liked also this experience of building it, do it yourself, right? Building it by yourself. Nice. So now we have talked to the manager and the teacher. So let's talk now to the technical professional. So technically, do you see yourself as a data analyst, a data engineer, or a data scientist? If I have to pick, uh, uh, I see more myself as a data analyst, uh, right at the interface between uh, the business requirements, uh, the business needs, uh, 
and data and algorithm. So if I have to pick, I would pick one. But fortunately, I have the opportunity to see the three, the, the full uh, landscape. But uh, yes, if I had to pick one, I would I would go for the first one, the data analyst. Yes, the data analyst. Okay, I see. So, and uh, um, you have been applying data analytics to businesses all your life, right? So, how significant is the impact the impact of implementing data analytics in a business? Does it does it help, or is just an academic exercise? I mean, it's a rhetorical question, but I love it because, of course, of course, data analytics can, you know, is making and will make a huge difference. It's a game game changer. It changes the way uh, the operating model of the company works, and so it changes the comp. It changes the the way the business is done. So it's not a technicality. Is not some data analytics is not an IT complexity to manage, absolutely. It's just the new way of um, operating. It's, mm, uh, and I've seen this um, many, many times. Uh, what, I, what I like uh, is the excitement. Mm, there is this magic moment, you know, when you uh, start, uh, when you prototype a capability and maybe when you run it for the first time with with an actual business case behind, so you put it at work, uh, and this is a there is a magic moment in which you see in the eyes of people, you know, excitement because they are they might have found uh, insights that they never expected, like finding in data something that even if you are a, a business owner and and an expert of your business processes, you find something that surprises you. And that's is super exciting, and then also the uh, you, the, the magic of uh, seeing how much you are simplifying your own life with the analytics, like uh, maybe decisions that would take uh, weeks uh, coming back to uh, to minutes or or hours, uh, just thanks mm -hmm. to the, the the magic of the uh, analytics. It's a, it's a very it's very exciting to 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 be able to. Um, uh, witness this time of um, uh, you know of transformation. Yes, very exciting. So it helps with the running what you are already running. It helps with discovering new new stuff. It helps with the morale of the people. It seems too. Absolutely, absolutely, because it's a data analysis is a change agent. It has now the being a um, general purpose technology. Like, uh, like it was in the first industrial revolution, the um, steam uh, machine, being a general purpose technology, it touches everything. It doesn't leave, any, it doesn't leave any, any, anything untouched in the way uh, the company operates. It can potentially touch everything. It, I guess it will at some point. Still, we are scratching the, the tip uh, of the of the iceberg, we are seeing the tip of the iceberg scratching the surface. However, you know it's pervasive. It is not something that uh, it's uh, definitely not for IT people only. It's not for analytics people only. And the more I see it in action, the more I get convinced that uh, is a base a vitamin skill uh, uh, for any knowledge worker, not just for just te the technicians. Oh I yes. See. Okay, um, so now as the manager, how do you build a data science team? Where do you start from? Um, of, of course, uh, it, it depends. However, for sure, I can tell you where you don't start from, <laughs> which is uh, to um, hire um, dozens of, uh, of like, um, uh, generic uh, um, data professionals without uh, looking first at, at, at the talent you already have in your house, in your company, in your family. So you mean uh, you can so grow a data scientist even if you don't have one? Absolutely. Upskilling is possible. I've seen it uh, with my own eyes. I keep uh, um, trying to enforce that. And it's got multiple benefits, at least the two which are very obvious, but I, I think it's worth thinking you know, uh, about this. 
One benefit is that uh, only the person with business prior business experience and prior understanding on how the data flows in that company can really make uh, best use of data analytics. You know, if you are hire brand new people, if if the full data analytics team is brand new, they will it will take months, uh, possibly a few years, uh, to get uh, to the um, you know the uh, to penetrate the business uh, as yeah. analysts should do. The data domain, yeah, the business. The data domain, yes. And the second the second thing is the excitement. Actually, exactly as you mentioned, Rosaria earlier, um, it's. Um, is um, uh, refreshing for professionals, whatever their background is, mm-hmm. whatever their previous expertise is, finance, marketing, sales, whatever, is refreshing to actually boost their career, boost their development path as a professional using data analytics, because data analytics is for everything. It's not, uh, again, uh, I repeat myself, it's not an IT uh, thing, of course. Talking about IT and the data science team. So this is a, a question that comes from my whole life, has been following me my whole career. So where should the deployment of uh, data analytics applications reside? Where should it reside? Uh, there is always this this fight if it has to stay in the data science team or if it becomes an IT um, uh, responsibility. Responsibility. Well, um, <laughs> inherently, <laughs> in a, but I mean, it's difficult. It's of course it's difficult to have a, like a general um, answer. I, I'm sure I would get it wrong if I attempt <laughs> to do a general answer because it it depends on the case, right? It depends on the also how the company is organized. However, there is for sure something that you know you need to keep in mind. Is inherently a collaboration. Uh, you 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 know um, the IT um, function. And the data science, data analytics function, if they are separate, because it depends also from the organization, if they are separate, uh, they, they they need to you know work hand in hand in seeing end to end what the data capabilities uh, uh, life cycle is going to look like, and uh, otherwise it's not sustainable. It will not. Uh, uh, you know, you can launch uh, a capability and then after a couple of months, uh, uh, it stops working. Um, I mean, it's inherently a collaboration. This is for the deployment, from the technical deployment. Then, of course, when it comes to the uh, ownership of the capability, the activation, so the utilization of the capability, the owner should definitely reside in the business I mean, it's not uh, is not for uh, is neither for the data science team and not mm-hmm. the it is the business that should feel and should have full ownership of the capability like uh, um, any other capability they they use to run the the business and that's also an important element you know of sponsorship of you know management sponsorship that uh, it's uh, one of the toughest thing to get at first, because it requires it needs it requires cultural change, but it's the most important, the single most important thing. It's more important that than actually having the super uh, uh, prepared uh, uh, data science guru supporting the creation of the algorithm. It's not that's that's I wouldn't say it's commodity because it's not, but it's secondary to actually. And the cultural change that comes with it from the business. I see. Yeah, the business. Okay, very important. Um, okay, so let's do now, let's play a bit the myth busters. Uh, so what are some of the popular myths around data analytics that are prevalent in the tech market and that you think they are unjustified? We could talk hours about myth master <laughs> also because it's, it's, it's kind of um, we need a lot of demystification data science data analytics was born with such a um, hectic uh, uh, with such with so much euphoria around that so many myths have been created one of them we mentioned right at the beginning the the myth that one single professional role, so the data science normally because it's the sexist of the 21st century as for the, as per the famous uh, <laughs> HB, HB, HBR uh, article. article. Um, 
So yes, uh, that one is a myth. Uh, you 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 can't do this. It cannot be on the shoulders of one single person. So that's uh, that's a myth to demystify. The other one uh, it's that uh, uh, it can be fully uh, automated. Now we hear a lot about. Uh, um, well, for those who are uh, listening carefully, we hear a lot about AutoML, no? which of course is a very important um, direction of uh, you know machine learning and artificial intelligence. I write about it in the book because I think it's important for everyone to know what it is. But it, it creates the myth that at some point, uh, uh, humans are not needed anymore and uh, machines will do machine so learning by themselves. It, it is it is false, but not according to Andrea. That you know, <laughs> pragmatically speaking, I mean, it's not uh, <laughs> it's, it's not a very important uh, source. But according also to um, uh, to uh, most of the scientific uh, community, all the artificial intelligence we are doing yeah. we are doing now is uh, uh, is is not the general artificial intelligence. Is a uh, uh, is uh, uh, there are many different names, but essentially is focusing on uh, solving specific issues and specific uh, uh, complexity, solving specific complexity, and so it requires uh, definitely the human guide, the human guide mm -hmm. for uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence to create value, and this is not going to change. It will evolve. The human involvement will be different. More and more will be, in my opinion, more um, um, abstracted. So mm -hmm. the conversation with the machine will become more and more human-looking uh, and less uh, code-based, back to the point of coding. But in any case, there will still always this need of collaborating between human beings, uh, women and men, and machines. And the machine, yeah. Yes, it's another big myth. <laughs> Two myths today. Two myths. Okay. Um, so in a, in a previous in some previous interviews, we have asked uh, um, you know the, for the top three nine notes that people prefer. So I'm going to ask that to you too. What about your top three nine notes? If you had to choose. Well, it's tough. I can tell you once that for whatever reasons I. I think they are the essential uh, ones, and I don't know. I kind of like so the joiner. The joiner is a come on, is a um, is a image of love, right? Of combining uh, different <laughs> tables, two tables into one. So the joiner is it's yeah, it needs to be there. Top, a top, top. rated, top. Um, real engine, maybe it. Uh, it, it's because I don't know. It uh, resonates with the uh, with the with uh, the, the, the the need of adding logic to stuff. Trying to add logic because we cannot, you know, use logic for everything. Unfortunately, in life. But you know, the real engine. Uh, it's a simple way to add some logic. So I think it's uh, the second uh, the second one. The third one. I don't know. I would say. Um, the family of the loop uh, nodes. Ah. So let's say loop start, right? Because it's uh, it's the one you start from. Yeah. Because Open with that you 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 operationalize, you simplify, you repeat, and so. Yeah. From the with the loops, you take your uh, simple workflow to something more sophisticated. You can exactly. control and optimize. Exactly. And yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So we are close to the end. So I would like to. At the end, talk to the author of the book. Um, I know that you have recently written a book, Data Analytics Made Easy. Um, so for whom is the book? For the data analyst, the data scientist, or the data engineer? Or so for the manager. Maybe for the man. Um, so I, I think uh, um, for three classes of people, knowledge workers. And I'm starting with them because possibly that's the most important class. So. I'm talking about basically everyone who has to deal with data in in their um, in their 
uh, work. So pretty much everyone, and I'm not saying that just because I have a larger <laughs> plethora, a larger group of readers, but it's because that, that, that's the intent of the book. The book is data analytics made easy because we, I personally believe everyone in a company can use uh, uh, data analytics. And so, you know, whenever you have a, a simple report you want to create an auto, or you want to automate a step, a sequence of steps that you run in Nine today, right? And oh, sorry, in uh, in Excel today, and you want to automate, or you want to make the best out of it. You want to um, create a simple report. You want to build a presentation um, using data in a way that it is convincing, is compelling. The knowledge workers, they they know exactly what I'm talking about. They all need data, and I wrote the book for them. So that, that's the that's the main the main. Uh, then I would also add the manager. I would add the manager because we all wish we have managers that know what they're asking for, right? And since more and more managers will need to uh, to expect stuff from data analytics, the, the great investment for them is to become aware of what they're asking for. So getting hands dirty themselves as well, whatever the level is, I had the opportunity in my life to teach analytics to many, very senior managers. And, and that was amazing and super fulfilling for them and for me, of course, because I learned so much. But So whatever the level, everyone can read the book and, and get the exposure. I would also add the students of any um, degree uh, who wants to get into the world of data analytics so that they get their hands dirty and so they can prepare to their first interviews. No, So it's, it's running the tutorials in the book, they add experience in their, in their curriculum, but most importantly, in their uh, you know, backpack of knowledge. Yes. Absolutely. I have the book here, actually. Well, randomly, um, randomly. <laughs> thank you. And, but, so thank you have you. made easy. What does it mean, made easy? Then, <laughs> well, made easy. Well, it means. Uh, thank you, thank you, Rosa. And you know, by by the way, let me let me say, you know, your book has been such an inspiration. Your book <laughs> on deep learning with uh, with nine, right? And you made easy deep learning, which is not easy at all. <laughs> so that's 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 that was amazing. Oh, made easy. I think the word made easy means two things. One, that is that is not easy because otherwise <laughs> there will not be the need. And it's true. It's complicated. It's not difficult. It's complicated. You need to know what you're doing. And so we acknowledge that. The second thing is that it can be made easy uh, through um, simple graphical explanations, many illustrations in the books, through the usage of tools like uh, Nime that are very visual, right? So it's easy to see the concept in life, uh, in uh, live, uh, by just following, uh, by playing with these uh, Lego bricks. And so, yes, that's that's why it's made easier. So also, I, I try to pick the tools and the tutorials to make it uh, simple, accessible for mm -hmm. everyone. Uh, yes, that, that's the point. Perfect. But then <laughs> the is title. the book enough? for anybody to understand data analytics and then even apply it. Look, that's, I hope so, because that's that's the, what, what I try to do. I, I, like to th I like to think that everyone who reads the book can apply it. And I, I'm, I'm quite uh, comfortable about that, about this uh, uh, bold uh, statement, because the, also the type of examples, they apply pretty much to, to everyone, there is, you don't need to be doing a specific role to actually make use of the of the book. Um, I like to think that the book, uh, the most important thing that the book can give you is reassurance, is optimism mm -hmm. that you can do it. And the the, the the book is progressive, is you know step by step, is always you know uh, hand holding uh, uh, throughout the full process, so that. You know, you can you can be, become confident that actually you can use data analytics at work, even if you don't have, uh, um, even if the company you work for you don't, you know you might not have like a, like training programs or you might not have 
uh, somebody to look up uh, to that you know guides you the book itself can make you autonomous enough to start the journey and so that that's the promise of the book now we will see what the readers will say uh, once I've the first read it, you know comments I come from that <laughs> so, thank you, thank you, Rosa. Uh, so, but then in the book, you also talk about ETL, um, connector to data sources, uh, mach some machine yes. learning, there is some machine learning, data exploration. So if you want, now we, we are almost at the end, if you want to dedicate the next uh, three minutes to give us a bit of a summary of the whole book. Three minutes. I've yeah, got uh, nine, nine chapters, so 20 seconds per chapter, <laughs> so that we talk pragmatically about the content and not just the theory. Chapter one is introduction to data analytics. Mm -hmm. What it is, uh, what is the concept of analyst toolkit, what tools you need to learn and what are the professional roles and how to create value. Introduction. Mm -hmm. Second chapter is introduction to NIME. Um, what is a node? What is a workflow? Um, and the first tutorial, which is uh, how to clean up, uh, how to clean a data set of consumer generated data, registration forms. Just an example to show the first, I think, nine. Everybody has to clean data. Or 10 nodes. Yes, everybody needs to do uh, tidy, uh, home tidying and then cleaning the, the data. The third chapter is uh, um, transforming data. So it's, so to say, nine. Num uh, second level, uh, so it's got um, you know all the um, simple data manipulation, the joiner of course, uh, um, but also loops, also variables. So actually getting hands dirty in the transformation bit. And the tutorial is about building a, a set of reports outputted in Excel, but you know after doing manipulation uh, with uh, with nine. Uh, then uh, we go to machine learning, chapter four, introduction to machine learning, key concept, key algorithms, how it works, how can a machine learn step by step, uh, simple concept, supervise and supervise, reinforcement, what it means, and where can I apply it at, at work. The chapter af after, chapter five, is getting machine learning at work with examples. So it's three tutorials with nine on how to build models. To mention one, because this is the Italian uh, pride that needs uh, how to um, uh, how to um, what's what's uh, how to predict the rental prices of houses in Rome uh, based on realistic uh, data, and it's it's you know there is the full workflow how to starting from raw data, how to actually predict prices of the houses. So, uh, sixth chapter is about. Uh, Introduction to Power BI, how to build a, from scratch a dashboard. The chapter after is how to uh, data visualization, the, the guidelines for creating visuals. The one after is uh, storytelling, mm -hmm. how to build stories out of data. Very Communication important is stuff. important. Yeah. Communication, um, starting from the, 88, uh, from the rhetorics, uh, principles to uh, how to build actually a, 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 a story and how to use PowerPoint for this. Very pragmatic, very pragmatic. Last chapter is what's next. It's about understanding how to connect uh, NIME with everything else, uh, with Python. Mm -hmm. It's about, it's, there is an introduction on Tableau so that you get a tool more in your backpack. And there is also an introduction on AutoML in action to see how it works. Nine it's chapters, it took more than five minutes, I know, but uh, no. But, uh, <laughs> okay, so, this okay. Um, this is the moment for the questions. Roberto, do we have any questions? Hello, hello, Andrea. Thank you for Ciao, being an, um, our data guest. Uh, so it was very interesting to listen to your perspectives on, on so many different ways you can work and you can manipulate your data, you can access them. So it was super insightful. So, so thank you for that. Thank and um, um, I do have actually a question while I was listening uh, to, to, the, to the interview. Uh, so you said that you, um, you work or you've been working as a data scientist, as a, as a data analyst, as a data engineer, or even as a data science manager, but you also write. 
So my question is very simple. What is the what is the role that you like the most? Uh, what do you what is what is something you think? Oh, if I could choose, I would just do this all day forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's tough. Um, <laughs> if if okay, one thing that uh, possibly I like uh, uh, I like the most is enabling others, and uh, I, I'm. And it somehow it connects with multiple mu multiple items. So enabling others, empowering others to create value with data analytics. That's that's the single thing. Then uh, uh, writing a book is is one way. Uh, running a training for my team at uh, Vodafone is another way. Uh, teaching at university is another way. Uh, but even in a business meeting, uh, talking about hey, uh, this is what we can do with analytics, like to solve this business issue that you just mentioned about like, uh, whatever, customers not happy or sales going down. This is how business analytics can make a difference. That's also empowering. I think this is the single thing I like the most and I find it across uh, different roles. Well, that's perfect. And you, you have the chance to experiment from different perspectives and to, as you said, enable professional also from different areas of expertise to actually um, make sense and uh, of the data that they have but also you empower them in, in a way to make uh, yeah, better yeah. and data driven yeah. decisions too. so that's that's great i think that's all from my side and uh, thank you very much and for being our guest Okay, then uh, I think with this, the time is, uh, we are definitely over time. If we conclude with this uh, last question by Roberto, here is Andrea's book, uh, in case you're interested. Thank you, Andrea, for the great conversation and for the all those hints about career, professional profiles, uh, low code, coding, and all the data science team organization. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosaria. Thank you. See Thank you at the you. next one. <laughs> Indeed. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao.